Uh, hi, and welcome to a brief description of contemporary developing countries, a course that I'm extremely excited to have developed over the past few years, and it's fabulous to see it get so much interest from across the university and the Boston area. Uh, the idea very much in the course is to put you, the student, uh, in the role uh, of uh, a potential entrepreneur, uh, a very people-centric course, uh, in the guise of someone who is out to make productive change, to allow developing countries to grow and prosper uh, in a variety of different ways. The philosophy of the course is that the problems of uh, economic development, uh, which of course have been studied by lots of eminences uh, prior to us, uh, that the problems are very deep-seated, uh, often somewhat intractable, uh, but that's different from saying that we shouldn't take a stab at them in some creative fashion. And the question really is, how do we organize uh, the mental effort uh, so that our investigations are somewhat more productive? In the course, what we do is we spend a little bit of time uh, talking about uh, the lay of the land in developing countries, a framework to think about what I refer to as the institutional context, so that there is uh, a little bit of a scientific way to decide what it is that we're going to focus on as would-be entrepreneurs. Is it going to be a problem like corruption? Is it going to be something about getting vaccines delivered in the last mile when there are cold chain problems? Uh, is it going to be about teacher absenteeism? Uh, is it going to be about pollution? Uh, the list of problems is endless. Uh, some of them readily find uh, private sector applications. Some of them are entirely in civil society. Some of them are even as entrepreneurs within uh, the public sphere, in governments in different ways. Uh, we take a very big tent view of entrepreneurship in the course. And certainly I don't want anybody equating the course with hot shots from Harvard Business School trying to take companies public and become fabulously rich. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm a professor at Harvard Business School, and I uh, relish the opportunity, and I'm privileged to be there. But that's not the only form of entrepreneurship. I think the idea is to do something that's novel, cool, productive, and exciting. And uh, I'm glad that you've joined me in that venture. The second part of the course uh, is to recognize and embrace the intractability of the problems, uh, as opposed to try to minimize it or abstract them away. Uh, and the way that I propose to introduce you to a process for do doing this is to learn to view the problem from a variety of different lenses. Some of you may remember the uh, parable of the blind men and the elephant. Uh, you know, when the blind men are asked, what does the elephant look like? Everybody goes and tries to feel his or her way around the elephant. Somebody grabs a trunk and says, uh, oh, it's a snake. Somebody grabs a tail and says it's a rope. Somebody grabs the, uh, the torso and says it's a wall. Uh, and that's a little bit of the metaphor I have in my mind, that these problems are so difficult that people approaching them from different vantage points are likely to see very different facets. And if we somehow uh, compel ourselves uh, or induce ourselves to get out of our sweet spots, to not be prisoners of our own biases, and learn to see the problems not just through the lens that we bring to the problem, but through the lenses of others, it's far more likely that we will have um, an encompassing view of the problem and far likely that we will see potential pitfalls, potential opportunities to address that problem. Now, the way we do this is uh, we are, after all, in one of the intellectual hotspots of the world. We're privileged to be here. Uh, and I thought some years ago that it would be nice to invite my colleagues to come in. And that's how the course took shape the way it currently is. So we have, uh, we're lucky enough to have a collection of colleagues coming in uh, and each of them will introduce a perspective on how you look at problems in the developing world. Let me say, uh, let me say a, a quick word about uh, somebody who uh, has uh, emerged uh, as central to the course, actually three different people. Uh, Sachit Balsari uh, is at the Harvard Medical School and the School of Public Health and taught this course with me last year, and he is my co-instructor throughout the course. In other words, he and I will be there throughout the course even though the, the, uh, a good chunk of the middle of the course is taught sequentially by uh, professors uh, Gajos, um, Marotra, and Summer. But such and I will be there throughout, one med school guy and one business school applied math type of person. And we, of course, have our own lenses and biases, and we will bring them to all the problems with you. But the idea is for the two of us to integrate the course uh, throughout and make sure that we are drawing connections across the different modules or helping you draw connections between them. Uh, we will also monitor the, uh, the discussion board, uh, online discussion board, which is an incredibly, incredibly important part of the pedagogical process. What you'll find is um, 
uh, sometimes in advance of classes when you will have done the readings, sometimes after the discussion in class, because classes are all in an entirely discussion-oriented format. There's very, very little lecturing in this course. Uh, the discussion continues online through the wee hours of the morning, and uh, it's something that I think is a very important part of the intellectual journey. Uh, I certainly participate frequently in it as a Sachet, and as do the many TFs. One of the perspectives that is very close to my heart is to think like a scientist. Um, sometimes uh, um, I conflate science with engineering, uh, science with mathematics in some ways. Uh, so think of it as an eclectic use of the idea of scientific thinking. To me, a centerpiece of this is uh, hypothesis development, hypothesis validation or refutation, um, and sequential iteration of progressively refined hypotheses, if you will, about the problem in question. Um, this year we have uh, a very good friend, Professor Shustov Gajos from the Department of Computer Science, uh, who will take us to this module and will introduce us to the idea of where do hypotheses come from to a scientist. Um, one of the centerpieces of what Shustov, um, I think, will develop with us is the idea that you need to be deeply immersed in the problem as a good scientist, as a good engineer, to understand the true needs. He refers to need finding, in a sense. What is actually the need uh, that, you're, uh, that you're out to address? Um, uh, typically, um, a little bit unfairly, but not too unfairly, uh, scientists are more uh, prone to solve something that's scientifically cool. And I think I want to make a distinction between doing something that's scientifically cool and trendy and on the cutting edge uh, and applying scientific thinking to a genuine need in a genuine developing country context. Those are two different things, uh, related but two very different things. I think Shostov will take us some distance along the way to appreciating what this need finding is, where the hypotheses come from, uh, and how we can sequentially, through an iterative process, uh, refine our hypotheses and think very much like a scientist. Some years ago, I convinced uh, another friend, Professor Doris Summer, um, uh, who is a Latin Americanist and an artist in the broadest sense, very much um, an aficionado of theater, of music, of art, uh, to come and teach the course. Now, uh, most of the uh, uh, young folks in the course say, what is an artist? What does reading Kant and Schiller have to do with entrepreneurship? Um, it turns out it's pretty central, and I think making that connection is one of the intellectual highlights of the course to me. Um, what we want to be able to do as potential entrepreneurs is uh, teach ourselves, and I do believe we can teach ourselves. We may not all be perfect at it, and certainly not my strong suit, uh, but teach ourselves how to imagine and teach ourselves the value of imagine, uh, imagination. Now, when you think about hypothesis testing uh, that I talked about with thinking like a scientist, it's more about uh, refinement, more about the elimination of uncertainty, the elimination of doubt, uh, in thinking like an artist, in this module, we're going to flip it around and say we want to cultivate doubt. We want to embrace doubt. We want to embrace ambiguity. We want to recognize the idea that most likely we're never really going to understand fully what the problem is that we're going to solve. And I think being open to the idea of not knowing is part of being a really good entrepreneur. And it turns out that philosophers and artists uh, of all persuasions, in all locations, the Doris is primarily Latin Americanist and uses examples from uh, Latin America, but really this applies everywhere, that artists have always embraced uncertainty and reveled uh, in the cultivation of ambiguity. Uh, and I think keeping those two opposing thoughts in your mind, the hypothesis refinement uh, from the scientist's point of view, as well as the cultivation of doubt from the artist's point of view, is very, very helpful to being a creative entrepreneur. The other thing that the artist's perspective does is it encourages you to see the world the way somebody else might see it. Uh, so there's a reason why at the medical schools today people are spending, the students, the uh, would-be doctors are spending a lot of time uh, sort of in, I want to call it empathy training. I'm not sure my med school colleagues will, would use the same word, but the idea is to go to museums and spend time learning to observe because you want the doctor to understand how to appreciate where the patient is coming from, uh, not just take his or her own perspective on the disease in question, but to see how the patient is experiencing the disease. And the same principle applies here, that when you want to be an entrepreneur and you're looking at addressing somebody's problems, you want to understand how they are experiencing the problem. So this idea of standing in the shoes of somebody else uh, is very important and comes out of thinking like an artist.
One of the people I met very early on in my years at Harvard uh, uh, is Rahul Mirotra, who is an urban planner, an architect, extraordinaire in the Graduate School of Design. Uh, I asked him some years ago to help us think like a planner. Um, he may not embrace the word planner. He may prefer to interpret it as think like an architect. But I'm going to talk about a planning, a planning perspective or think of it as a policymaker perspective in some ways. The idea here is that uh, not only do you need to uh, cultivate uncertainty like an artist, uh, to reduce uncertainty and refine hypotheses like a scientist, but you also need to take a system-wide view. And this is particularly important in developing countries. What you find in developing countries is uh, when you want to solve a particular problem, it turns out that that problem is somewhat unaddressable unless you solve a collection of ancillary, related, intertwined problems. And this is what makes the task of the entrepreneur quite onerous and quite challenging, but also exciting and fruitful and productive. Uh, now, to be able to solve a collection of interrelated problems, you have to have a bird's eye view of the entire problem. And that is where I think uh, an, an architect, a planner, an urban planner, approaching a development um, issue, say on a waterfront um, or in a rural area in some developing country, has to step back and say, what's the entire context? What's the social fabric? What's the economic fabric? What's the political reality? Who are the key actors in here? What are their constraints? What are their capabilities? Who is going to bear the risk in this? How is system-wide risk going to be allocated? And a whole mess of other questions that I think come out of the perspective of thinking like, if you will, a top-down um, uh, planner, policymaker, what have you. It's system-wide thinking at its very best. Towards the end of the course, um, we, we arrive at what I consider to be the highlight, uh, um, the centerpiece, which is the project where you will work with hopefully four or five uh, people, teams, to address a very particular problem that we will collectively agree on uh, in a very particular developing country location. The idea there is to apply the two intellectual pieces of the course. First, getting a sense of the overall landscape of that developing country situation uh, understanding the institutional idiosyncrasies, limitations of creating something that is actually a functioning entity, whether it's a company, a nonprofit, an organization, a foundation, doesn't matter to me, but something that's a functioning organization that's out there solving a problem. Right? So there's understanding the context. And then secondly, there's the thinking like X series of lenses, whether it's scientists, artists, policymaker, etc., so that you view the problem in a variety of different lenses. And then uh, the course will ask you, as your final deliverable, to work with what I hope are diverse teammates, and the diversity is important, because you don't want to be um, um, all philosophy majors in a team, uh, or all artists, or only architects, or only business school people, or only doctors. You want to have a mix uh, of different people, for the same reason that I tried to enunciate earlier, that you want to see the problems through different people's lenses. Uh, and then you create a plan, and we will help you with a series of resources and interventions to help you refine the plan uh, and see how far you, you get. Um, as I said, these problems are almost by definition uh, intractable, so the expectation is that we will try to find a creative way to take a, a good old whack at it and see how much progress we can make uh, in a real-world problem. And it's exciting to me when some of these projects go on and get implemented in the developing world, as has happened frequently, um, very often they, they have a, a life of some years and then they evolve into something different and that's the, that's the nature of the beast. That's what problem solving is like. Uh, and it's a whole lot of fun. Thank you.